All right, welcome. It is Wednesday, April 6th. And we are at General Housing and Military Affairs. And we are working on H329. I'd like this to be the last hour that we're working on H329, if possible. I mean, we just don't have time to keep working on it, but I think we're close to just having it be in a place where, as I mentioned yesterday, um, the goal of working on this was to straighten out. This was a priority bill for, for me and for others. Um, we've been working on this since crossover to try to get language that um, is sufficient for the stakeholders. Um, there is a letter from Heather Lint, who is, is on our website today, which gives um, the, the V's current opinion on the bill. And um, as I stated yesterday at our, at our National Guard meeting, the goal here is to um, be in a place where we can share this language as an amendment, whether it's to, and there's two amendments within this bill based on germaneness. Um, we would split the fair housing piece off and, and consider it for the, the housing bills that are in front of us. And the employment piece would be considered in uh, context of H320, which is an employment discrimination bill as well. So they have, there's germaneness there. Um, with that, I think um, I would ask Damien to share the screen. And so this is version 4.3. Um, it should reflect the changes that we put into it. Um, specific, I think specifically the, the language that we took a straw poll on. There is a piece of it where there was, a, there was um, uh, some, some uh, dyspepsia over what I suggested to change in 4.2 without bringing it to the committee. So we'll review that language and see where we are. So um, Damien, welcome. All right. Good morning for the record, Damien Leonard, Office of Legislative Council. Okay. So draft 4.3 uh, dated last week on the 30th at 10.41 a.m. So the changes here, as usual, are highlighted in yellow. Uh, so you'll notice here, notwithstanding any state or federal judicial precedent to the contrary, we've renumbered because we got rid of the uh, thou shalt construe this broadly and liberally to accomplish the remedial purposes of the law language. Uh, so renumbering in subdivisions one and two. and. Moving on to <laughs> section two, there are no changes in that section. In section three, with respect to the legislative intent for the Fair Housing and Public Accommodations Act, we've eliminated the notwithstanding precedent to the contrary language. So we have now capitalized the at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, in section four, this section uh, I left highlighted, even though we looked at it last week. Um, and so this provides uh, connect uh, some corrections in the discriminate or harass language here. So clarifying that we're referring to with a dwelling or other real estate, adding a comma after harass. Uh, and then the definition of harass uh, being added here in subdivision D1, uh, which is <laughs> the language in here reflects the language that we actually use in the fair housing uh, statute. And then moving on to subdivision D2, we have the notwithstanding judicial precedent to the contrary. Uh, providing that it need not be severe or pervasive to be unlawful. Uh, and then in determining whether conduct constitutes unlawful harassment, determination shall be made on the basis of the record, incidents shall be considered in the aggregate. Conduct may constitute unlawful harassment regardless of whether, and then the list 
uh, of items that matches up to the employment law. Uh, and then one thing to note is that in the employment law, we provide that behavior that a reasonable person would consider to be a petty slight or trivial inconvenience does not constitute harassment. That language is not here. Uh, so the one question that we have here is should that language be added? Um, we added it back in in the employment law. I don't think we reached a decision on this the last time we talked. Um, I think we had briefly touched on it and then went off in a different direction. So I just wanted to reflag that for the committee. And was it in the original draft and then and then deleted? In yes, I believe so. We did blow well, up. I mean, I'll say inadvertently, that's how we felt about the employment section. Yeah, I believe I deleted it at the same time and then uh, did not add it back in uh, when we were discussing it when we added it back in for the employment section. Sure. So, but I, I do want to just flag that for the committee without assuming that that's something that you want to add back in, but that would clearly establish a floor that, you know, sort of petty slights and trivial inconveniences uh, wouldn't constitute housing uh, harassment or discrimination. Right. Representative Murphy. I just, I was going to echo that I think it is important to have the floor. I think that's an important piece that we have had. And I think that I, I, I would support putting it back in. And I think that was the intent of the bill. And so if, that's a, if the, is there struggle? <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, so let me um, stop sharing. That's it for the changes. Okay. Can, before you, I'm sorry. Oh, before you do that, um, can you? address did, did you return like again i asked you to do something based on a letter where was that and what did where is this how does it show up in 4.3 i just want to make sure we go around and right so that language would have been uh down it would have been another subdivision below this here so it would have been i believe a, a d3 here and that basically would have provided uh, nothing in this section shall be construed to apply to public accommodations or uh, an action brought under 570F. But because this is already says uh, as used in this section rather than this chapter, it's already construed so that it only applies to actions under this section. So, okay. section, 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 not chapter. That's the correct. Two piece here. Yep. Okay, committee, is that, can we close that circle on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So I'm going to open up the document and uh, if there's committee discussion, I may be able to get a draft 5.1 with uh, additional language in it uh, that we just discussed. Yeah. Um, So yeah, you can work on that. I mean, committee, any any comments right now on where we are with this? And then, so Damien, you would be separating out the appropriate sections when, I mean, maybe when you go to, um, you could just put a, put a little star, which would show where the, you know, or something that would show where the sections would be separated. Sure. Um, I see, I see, um, or Yang has just joined us. Heather Lynn is here. Um, Heather, may I ask you to come on line? Good morning. Welcome back. Hi. Um, nice to see you all. Nice to see you all. Look, it's springtime. Um, <laughs> I'm in California, so uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's never rains. And it's six thirty here, so uh, it's bright and early. I'm 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 still on my first cup of coffee, so I, I will try to be coherent. <laughs> um, sounds like a classic Zoom situation here. Um, Indeed. So you sent a list. You sent us a letter. Can you just sort of recapture it for us in in a nutshell about? 
um, where we are with with um, the bees on this? Absolutely. Um, the the draft that your ledge council just walked you through is acceptable to us. We had concerns with the prior draft. We appreciated the language saying that it didn't apply to schools, but we felt that the description in that section that had been now taken out was incomplete. But uh, I agree with um, what your ledge council just stated, which is this section really makes clear that it's limited to, you know, not the full chapter, but to the section. And by doing that, our concerns fade away. So. Okay. Um, thank you for your input on this bill. It's, I know it's been a little rough at times, but I appreciate the time that you spent on it. And, um, and at, at four, if, are you available to talk? I am. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you um, too. And I'm just curious if you have any thoughts um, on where the language is on this. I know it's not as complete as what the original bill was intending, but um, this is where we are now, and we'd like to be able to. Um, I think I explained this right before you came on. You may have heard it just about the idea that that. Um, we will we have identified potential vehicles for this language we just need to make sure i would like to make sure that our committee is fine with this language so that when we see it again we don't have to have the same conversations we now we've had for the last couple of months yes um and thank you for inviting me i i do just want to say that the human rights commission is in support of draft 4.3 and I know that it took a lot of work, a lot of debate, a lot of discussion, and I really appreciate all of that. I think all the people that this bill really seeks to represent and work for also knows that it took a lot of work to get here. I think that the bill, the dra current draft as it is, definitely signifies that the committee and the legislature is staying neutral on the issues of schools and places of public accommodations so that the future committees uh, can address those issues should this bill be introduced in that area. And I think that's important because that actually reflects what happened in committee, which is there wasn't enough time. Um, but I really do appreciate all of the hard work that has been put into it and we do support the current draft. Thank you. And thank you for um, your perseverance and patience. So, you know, same, you know, whenever, well, it's the legislative process. That's all, that's, that's, that's the best I can say. So, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for, for bringing this forward and for, and for helping us understand the problem we're trying to address here, um, which is, which is incredibly important. Um, and as you said, we'll start with employment and housing, and we'll and, and it'll be up to the proponents of, of another bill to address the next steps. So um, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so again, committee, my idea is that if we we're not taking a vote on this because there's no vote necessarily to be had, except as perhaps a, as a straw vote to say, are we done with work on this bill? at this time um, and then it'll be up to the continuing process to see if we can fit the language or well, we're going to wait to see i mean that's the question to me on the table is 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 are we ready to just sort of put this aside and be ready to add this if we if we consider it for other bills um, that's that's where we are representative Hengel. thank you um i just want to say a couple of things um until yesterday at the end of our hearing with the national guard i was not aware that the reason that we were working on this language was because it might be inserted into other bills um, specifically the housing bills and that that part of the process disturbs me um so just wanted to put that out there that um, I feel like those bills are complicated enough, both of them as they are without adding 
this to it, a complete change in statute um, for discrimination and harassment. And the other thing um, is in regards to removing the language for schools and public accommodations. While I really appreciate that, that it's made this bill a little bit simpler without having to consider those, um, those places. I am concerned, particularly after Ms. Yang just gave her, um, her final statement about future work on this issue. So we had H320 earlier, which built on one particular change in statute from an act that was enacted, I believe in 2018 or 19, I can't remember which. Um, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, we did this for this situation. So now we've got to do it for these three or four situations. So I'm envisioning this definitely coming back and we're going to have to address the school and public accommodation section. Um, so I feel like this is just prolonging that. And my preference would be to have one bill that deals with all of the areas that are um, a place where someone could harass or discriminate. I don't like this piecemeal approach. And I'm, I'm sure that others share my feelings about this throughout the building. It's not just me who feels like this about, about bills the way we're seeing them um, being constructed this session. So I just wanted to voice my frustration with that. Okay, um, Representative Murphy. I just wanted to share that I had been talking earlier and, and Representative Kalaki had said, maybe I should share that this, this is a first for so many at this table because even those that are sophomores representatives didn't finish a biennium in the building and, and didn't even finish. I mean, there was like an extra five months to finish. So it was really weird. Um, and this actually isn't abnormal. I mean, it really, it's really, really hard. I'm, I'm dealing with several students who aren't um, getting responses on bills. And when you look the bill up, there's not really any action on it, but the language is very familiar. So I know it actually got put in somewhere and, and um, they're in other areas. They aren't from our committee room, but they're in other areas. So there is this, frustration of how do you track a piece of language that is legislative intent and, and action um, as it gets popped around to see where it fits and where it can move. And it's a level of frustration that just occurs. And I mean, things will get put into the budget bill that, that are, they feel like it's new policy, but it could be something another committee really did push through and just, so there's a piece of, I guess I'm just trying to say, there's a piece of just hold on to your hat, um, use the search mechanism for, for language. If there's something that you really wanna see kind of where it came from or where it's going or if it's going anywhere and try to under, try to do the portion you can, you can get your arms around and, and make a contribution on and just not hold too dear to anything because it gets crazy. And, and you know, for those listening and, and for all of us, it, as I told John earlier, I may not be this calm even in an hour, let alone in three days or four weeks, but um, all you can do is take a deep breath and just keep trying. And it is frustrating. And things do always lay groundwork for what next session could bring. It, it just, it's the nature of the beast. And I don't know that it's really a bad way. It's just a really frustrating way. And, and so my contribution. For what it's worth. Yeah, thank you. Noted. Um, that will be a recurring theme for the next month. So just know that um, while we may serve in different parties, some of us are, you know, my responsibility as a chair is to make sure that I keep the lanes of communication open. People can express their opinions about the bills or the process or you know, whatever um, we're dealing with in front of us. And that's, um, I will do my best to try to make sure that that, no matter how testy it might get, and um, I know it will. Um, and it's not even by party speaking to someone who doesn't have one. <laughs> I have a very small party. <laughs> I'm trying to explain that, you know, when somebody says quad partisan, I'm kind of like, but non-distant. 
That's it's dissing the, 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 the nonpartisan groups. There's three party now. Yeah, yeah, you know, I know. Um, the unicorn. <laughs> so we'll wait to see five. It's up. It's up. <clears throat> it's up. Yeah. I knew if we talk long enough, we get done. <laughs> I'm emailed it, and it's also on our website. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yep. Just like that. So here's the added language. Uh, behavior that a reasonable person with the same protective characteristic would consider to be a petty slight or trivial inconvenience shall not constitute unlawful harassment or discrimination pursuant to this section. So again, we've constrained it to the section and we're using the word reasonable person um, here in place of reasonable employee, which we use in the employee section or employment law section. The other addition is you'll see throughout, I've added breaks, the effective date, um, just because we usually break that out. Statute of limitations, this could go in any number of bills. Um, it could go in a miscellaneous judicial bill. It could go into a bill that relates to either the housing or the employment because it ties to those. Again, I will emphasize if you have questions about germaneness, please defer to the clerk's opinion, not mine. So this is this is my preliminary reading, but the clerk is the final arbiter on germaneness. So, um, but this likely could be dropped into any number of bills. And then we've broken out uh, sections three and four, which are fair housing. Uh, and sections one and two, which are employment. So I put those, those highlights in there just so that if you're looking at it, you can see what all the sections are and track where they might end up. Other questions? Representative Clark. Um, I just saw, I know the possibilities, this would go as one amendment somewhere, or could this be broken out to two amendments? One around fair so, housing, one on employment, or no? So yeah, so this this language, yeah, you can now take this language and do with it as you please. Um, so you can offer it as an amendment to two, even three separate bills. Okay. Um, so theoretically, you could put the employment language onto one of the employment. Uh, like H320, which you sent over to the Senate. If they send that back with a proposal of amendment, you could add this to it. Alternatively, you could ask that committee to consider adding this language to that bill. Um, so, and then with, uh, I think it's S226 is your housing bill. You could add the fair housing language to that. Um, and then the, the statute of limitations language you could add to either of those bills, or if there's a bill in judiciary that relates to sort of miscellaneous judicial topics uh, related to statutes of limitations and court procedure, you could drop section five into that uh, as well. Um, so all of those are vehicles. And then of course, the big bill, the budget bill, uh, is often seen as germane to pretty much everything. So that's also often a vehicle for these things when we get into the uh, okay. FGHI, JK letters for sections there. Um, Thank you. So good to know. Yep. I think we will, I mean, I've had preliminary conversations with the clerk. I'll take this language to the clerk and just, again, I'm being as, I'm being as open on where what we may do with this, I'm not, there's no guarantee that this language will get into any bill, but but I wanted to get to this point where we were satisfied with with the, we could stop working on the bill. I think we've come to a period. So, um, but I would ask, you know, before, from this point forward, we'll talk, the next step for me will be to talk to the clerk and, and if, if it gets passed off, if we split it in any particular way. So, um, <laughs> Are you looking for a straw poll, Chair? Yes, I'd just like a straw poll for us to say, are we, it's not even, it's not about supporting the bill. It's just about, are we finished with our work on this bill? Um, so all those who are 
All those who think we're all done with the work on this bill, please raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you. And then we will, um, so Damien, I'll, I'll um, if you have a clean copy. Sure. Um, I will take care of that in just a second. And I'll send it uh, to the committee. So I'll label this as final H329. <laughs> um, it'll be the same version, just labeled as final. Um, so you can distinguish it from the marked up version. I'll get it to you in just a second. <laughs> Close the window instead of uh, turning it into. Uh, all right. So thank you, everybody. This was a, this was a lot of work and. I didn't think it was going to be easy, and that came true. So, on this so far, um, Heather, thank you. Um, <coughs> feel free to take a nap. <laughs> thank you all, and and thank you again for uh, letting me participate. This is a new experience, and I'm very grateful for your patience as I worked through this and tried to explain our position. Very grateful, and good luck on next. Thank day. you. Enjoy California. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, committee. Um, let's our next. Um, so our, our next chunk of time is with is going to be with um, S two ten for the rest of today. Um, What I'd like to be able to do is uh, we have some witnesses about specific sections of the bill. Um, I'd also like to have you know start a conversation about how we can prepare the how, how we can work through the sections of the bill, what we agree on, what we you know what we need to work, what we need will pass, you know, and which is always a conjecture. Um, but let's take um, let's take time off now. Representative Kalaki. Um, it, it, as we walk through this, uh, I know that it, will we take into account the amendments <clears throat> that are in S226 to the S210, or are we going to leave that when we talk to X? Well, we'll talk with them in conjunction. I mean, the only one that stands out to me, the first, the first one that stands out to me is the VHIP money. The, the VHIP language, which is mostly about ADUs. And, but anyway, yes, we'll take that into consideration. Great. I mean, so I would like to be able to just tidy up the bills between themselves. Yes. And um, work on concepts like this language behind me in from 226. And um, and then we're going to take we're going to take um, so of course we will consider adding the fair housing piece when we deal with two twenty six full time tomorrow. Um, but I think we're identifying different pieces that we have to start. You know, it's, things are going to get shuffled a few times over the next couple of weeks on these bills. But I just want to keep checking back and tidying them up, and then start working on them again. Um, so let's go.